While much of the nation's attention is focused on the hearings happening in Washington, D.C., there's also a very special event about to take place in the U.S. Capitol. Tomorrow, Florida will install its next symbolic representative in Statuary Hall, Daytona Beach's own Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. She's the first black American to represent a state and be honored in this way. Westview has been following the story for almost five years now. Stuart Moore is live at the Capitol tonight for us. And Stuart, history is about to be made in D.C. with Dr. Bethune. And Jim and Michelle, you guys are so right. Just behind me through that doorway is Statuary Hall here at the U.S. Capitol. And in there stands tributes and marble and bronze to some of this nation's greatest citizens. And now waiting for her unveiling is Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. You've seen the statue before, 11 feet tall, 6,000 pounds of the world's best marble. Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune recreated by the hands of master sculptor Nilda Comas for the honor of a lifetime. I feel that she's so deserving and that it's such an honor for me. Immortalized in Statuary Hall at the U.S. Capitol. It's okay to ask yourself why. Why is this woman the choice of Florida to represent the Sunshine State in the halls of Congress? Dr. Bethune's story is not widely known. She's not taught in all U.S. history books. Not yet. Before Martin Luther King Jr., before Rosa Parks, before John Lewis, there was Mary McLeod Bethune. What she was born into and how she evolved and where she ended up, she continues to make history. That, to me, is the most astonishing thing about her going to Statue Hall. Dr. Bethune made her mark on Central Florida first at the turn of the 20th century. Opening a school to educate young black women in Daytona Beach, she did it with a dollar fifty and a dream. I had one dollar and fifty cents in cash, but I had faith in God. Dr. Bethune had a way about her. Trained as a missionary, her power of persuasion was undeniable. Her passion for education, civil rights, and equality unrelenting. In the early 1900s, she befriended wealthy whites who invested in and elevated her school, which would one day become Bethune-Cookman University. But Dr. Bethune's work for the rights of black Americans broke barriers. Democracy is for me and for 12 million black Americans a goal to which our nation is marching. It is a dream and an idea in whose ultimate realization we have a deep and abiding faith. She advised U.S. presidents, including FDR and Harry S. Truman, helping to codify opportunities for black Americans during a time of segregation. She co-founded the National Council of Negro Women and the United Negro College Fund. And she crushed stereotypes with their enduring friendship with First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, the pair treating each other as equals, showcasing how racial harmony was possible. Dr. Bethune created change in Central Florida as well. She opened the first hospital for all people at a time when blacks were turned away from medical treatment. She purchased oceanfront property and opened the beaches at a time when they were segregated. And she educated women as well as black men on how to exercise their right to vote and surpass the obstacles meant to dissuade them from a casting ballots. She had a class to educate women on how you vote, what is involved in the process, and she led a delegation down to the, uh, to the poll. For all these and so many more reasons, in February 2018, the state of Florida selected Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune to replace a Confederate general who had been a symbolic representative of the state at the U.S. Capitol. And after all these years of planning and preparing, the day of honor has now arrived. And guys, back here live, Dr. Bethune's story and her example have touched so many lives, which is why so many people are here in Washington to see this dream come true. Coming up at 5, we'll show you what they have been doing this week to celebrate Dr. Bethune ahead of tomorrow's big unveiling. Reporting live in Capitol, Stuart Moore, West 2 News.